Dave Wright, who is the producer of True Tales from the Golden Burrow, has asked me to make a couple comments about ghosts in Leadville as part of his episode concerning ghosts at the Golden Burrow. Leadville had such frenzied activity in its early years, people coming to get their fortunes overnight, people running away from things as well as running to a new life. Families developed their home life here in small 900 square foot cabins to just keep warm and fed was a struggle. There was such intense activity here during all those years. Some people died way too early, some of them violently, whether by mine accidents or by shootings, pneumonia. All these things tended to give an atmosphere in later years of, of oppressed activity, very, very heavy atmosphere of, of, of another world out there where people were still busy, even though they had died many, many years ago. So it's not unusual that you'd find episodes of a young child at the top of the stairs in a house here in Leadville who occasionally lets a little rubber ball trickle down the stairs. And uh, of course, the, the boy died some years ago or the rocking chair on the third floor of another house here in Leadville that moves by itself and the family's pets won't go anywhere near the stairway to the third floor. All these things are part of Leadville's history as much as the stories of people who were alive, the characters who were alive. They're still here. There's still spirits that are, that are letting us know what a marvelous place this was and they're not finished with it yet. <laughs> Hi, my name's Evan. I work here in the kitchen of the Golden Burrow. Wanted to tell you all about something strange that happened one night. Myself and the cook were standing over there in the dish pit. We were talking. We were closed. We were the last two in the building. We were even off the clock. We were about to leave. And we heard this strange noise behind us. And it sounded exactly like that so we turn around we came over here and we had two spoons that had been hanging up laying in a cross fashion like this the problem with it is is that they hang up on these hooks just like all of these do and they're just slant so they can't fall off it just can't be done the only way these come off is if somebody lifts them off and sets them down. Plus, to come in here, they'd have to be in an angle so they didn't fall. It's very obvious. Problem was, the cook and I were the only two in the building. It was a night shift, we were closed, and we did not touch it. So, you tell me who did, because I thought it was cool. All I could do was say, whoever did that, hi, how you doing? I was walking through and I found a loaf of bread in the kitchen on the floor. I was wondering what the heck happened, so I asked the waitresses what's going on and she told me the craziest story. Tori, what happened with that bread? So the other day we were hanging out in the kitchen preparing food and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, the bread just flies off the shelf and onto the ground. And in the coffee cups too? Yes, so one time I was opening in the morning and I came into the waitress station and all of the mugs were all over on the floor and it looked like someone had thrown them on the floor. I mean there was some, some definitely distance going on there that someone definitely moved those coffee mugs. Jeez, that's so yes. crazy to hear. We have so many ghost stories. Wendy, what about that one time out front? One morning I was coming to work and the cooks usually let me in in the mornings. They get here before I do. And I was beating on the door, trying to get in. And the cooks was motioning their hands, saying no, no, no. And then told me to walk around with, by pointing. So I walked around the building, came in, and the bell was ringing. And the cooks would not go to the front of the restaurant. The, the bell all by itself? All by itself. No one was up front. The cooks were in the back. Crazy stuff. <laughs> 
I have one of my own as well. I was in the office one day checking out all of our security cameras. We have a few surveillance cameras here at the borough and just doing our, my rounds, checking all the cameras. I just so happened to see this one way up here in the banquet room. It's maybe 12, 15 feet up in the air, yes. And I was watching this camera just as I normally do and all of a sudden a hand went right over the camera. I mean right on top of it. Blacked it out, held it down. It was terrifying. It, it, maybe about five, ten yeah. seconds a hand just holding that camera and then it just went away. Just came right away just like that. And it's 15 feet up in the air. No person could have touched that. That's a crazy story there. Yeah, it gave me goosebumps. Hey. What? So what makes Evan's story so intriguing is that this hose sits on a hook and it has to be sprayed down really hard to spray it. It was all by itself spraying this whole kitchen with no one holding the sprayer. Well, it wouldn't be a complete ghost episode if I didn't make my little contribution here. As Judge Reynolds said at the beginning of this little segment, Leadville was a wild town and the Golden Borough actually has been a part of it for over 80 years. And uh, I'm sure there are some spirits that still haunt this building as we've seen others talk about it. And uh, part of the history of Leadville involves the wild and woolly stuff and some of the people that have come back as spirits um, might mention here real quickly one of the three legal hangings that took place in Leadville way back when was a fellow named Cy Minnick who murdered a guy named Samuel Baldwin and his ghost after he was hung was seen in the jail cell where he spent his last hours and down Chestnut Street in Leadville walking the streets for several years after his hanging proclaiming his innocence and just for the record if you are interested in seeing the full-length story of Simonic it's available on coloradovideos.com and just look under the title murders mysteries and myths anyway we can only imagine the hundreds of thousands of people that have eaten here at the Golden Burrow in this little warm friendly cafe here in Leadville Colorado and we know that some of them, like Judge said earlier, uh, may still linger around because it was such a friendly place to be. My first experience with the hauntings here at the Golden Borough was several years ago when I had to take one of our cooks up to the clinic for stitches in her head. And apparently a pot had come flying off one of the shelves and hit her in the head. And of course, naturally I say, well, that's whatever, it was an accident and all this stuff. But it wasn't too much longer after that that I had a dishwasher who said he had seen a man in a dark tall hat and a dark coat come walking towards him in our receiving room back by the kitchen area. And again, I, yep, yeah, okay, whatever. It was about three weeks after that that our night janitor in a completely separate part of the building and who did not even know our dishwasher at the time came to me with the same story and he says this man a black tall hat and a black coat came at me and he says I don't want to go back in that banquet room anymore and these two had never spoken so the question is how would they both have seen the same apparition if they were going to fabricate a story they weren't because they didn't know each other so those were my experiences and then about six or seven months after that I was standing in our kitchen and bear in mind this is a closed room there's no doors or windows in the kitchen and I heard a kind of a clanging and I glanced over at our 
pots hanging down, pans hanging down from our rack, and they're back and forth, back and forth. So I am now officially a believer in the hauntings here at the Golden Barrel Cafe in Leadville, Colorado. Some of these witnessed experiences here at the Golden Burrow um, go back many, many years, but I'd like to point out that just a couple of days ago, uh, another incident happened that I'm a personal witness to. Our surge protector went down and I went over and bought another one, and of course, replacing it, you unplug everything out of the old one and plug it all into the new one, which I did. And one of the plugs that goes into that surge protector runs the computer system in the burrow. And everything was working fine. About 10 minutes later, our computers went down. And I, what's going on here? So I went back and looked at the surge protector and the plug that the router for our computers was plugged into was not only no longer plugged in, but it was setting a good 18 inches away from the surge protector in the opposite direction of where the surge protector, <laughs> where the router was. So it wasn't like the plug could have possibly just fallen out. It had come out and had moved itself 18 inches in the opposite direction of where the cord started from. Figure that one out. So from one of the longest continually operating restaurants in the state of Colorado, and speaking in behalf of many of the happy spirits that still reside here, we wish you a long and happy and spirited life. By the way, we appreciate all your comments. The list of people watching this is growing. Feel free to drop us your note. In the meantime, check in with us a week from now and we'll have another brand new True Tales from the Golden Borough.